a PhD student in Dr. Andrew Dubini's lab at Purdue University. And today I would like to talk about my dissertation research on the conservation genomics of Montezuma quail in North America. So many recent, uh, recent studies, uh, uh, many recent um, agencies, uh, both in US and international, have uh, compiled a remarkable uh, study uh, that indicates that there has been a global rise in temperature and land use, and other many global studies on biodiversity loss have shown that we are encountering an unprecedented rate at which we are losing natural population in all the major continents. And they, these results have shown that in most of these regions, we have lost more than 50 to uh, more than 50 percent of the uh, populations. And uh, these uh, dire <laughs> annihilation of biodiversity is being seen because the rate at which the, uh, a species can adapt to its environment is very uh, slower as compared to uh, the rate at which the environment is changing thanks to all of us, I guess. <laughs> and uh, these, uh, that's why the adaptation cannot counteract these negative effects. And, uh, we also know for a fact that the, the, the overall genetic diversity of a population uh, governs how much adaptability that species can have, and thus loss of genetic diversity can compromise the species' ability to adapt. So in order to conserve a species, we have to first understand how the, gene uh, the population, uh, the, the genetic structure of the population is spatially distributed, and there's a long-standing hypothesis in population genetics called the centroperiphery hypothesis. And the fundamental idea is that a population that exists at the margin are genetically um, well, less, uh, genetically more differentiated than the more continuous range at the core, and they have a less uh, within population diversity uh, as compared to, again, the core population here. So when a population, uh, or when a species range expands at the trailing edge, the lead, uh, sorry, at the, tra uh, the leading edge, the trailing edge, can, uh, the population at those ends become more isolated and fragmented and can uh, lead to uh, population extractions for that. So as an example, a recent study was conducted in the uh, two subspecies of uh, gorillas in Africa using uh, my, whole minor genome sequences from the present populations that are more in the core and the ex now extinct peripheral populations. And what there is, uh, they found out that not only the overall uh, nucleotide diversity has decreased over time, but also these peripheral populations that are now extinct uh, show uh, unique haplotypes that are not part of the gene pool anymore. So taking together these, uh, uh, these results and other studies, the idea is the peripheral populations are often more pop, uh, prone to extinction due to environmental and demographic stochasticity, but more importantly, they might contain certain genetic variants that are not present in the core population and can contribute to the overall uh, evolutionary potential of the gene pool of a species. So this leads to our study system, the Montezuma quail. These are uh, New World Order quails uh, that are found, uh, sorry, that are, uh, that are mostly found in the old grassland and the desert grassland landscapes in the mountain ranges of southwestern United States and mostly Mexico. And they have very small dispersal ranges, so they are mostly uh, uh, limited to certain regions within these landscapes. So Montezuma quail has been listed uh, on the yellow watch list by the Partners in Flight database, which means that they have highly vulnerable population trends. Also, due to the declining number of individuals in Texas, the Texas Park and Wildlife Department has also uh, labeled uh, these Montezuma quail as vulnerable in, in the state. One of the major challenges in studying the species is they are extremely difficult to wild trap, uh, live trap and monitor, and it's mostly because of their cryptic plumage. And thus, a very little is known about their biology except for the fact that they are dying and there is a dire need to conserve this species as well. <laughs> All right, so the central, portion, uh, the central focus of my research is to uh, try conserving these little fragmented populations of Montezuma quail in Texas 
But the central question of the study is, are these uh, small isolated ticks of population undergoing genomic erosion? So genomic erosion in conservation framework uh, mostly denotes the loss of extreme and widespread loss of advantageous genes or genotype combinations that can drive population extinction even if the habitat and the census numbers look favorable to persistence. So in order to test this uh, question or in order to identify whether these populations are actually exhibiting signs of genomic erosion, we first sequenced uh, uh, one female and one male Montezuma code individual and uh, assembled and annotated the genome and found uh, genome-wide single nucleotide polymorph polymorphisms. Uh, our SNP markers. We also created a, a manually curated list of key uh, genes that have been shown to be involved in uh, fitness traits like reproduction and growth, immunity, uh, immune response, etc. And these are all um, curated from already published avian and gallium literature. So the, by quantifying the variation at these uh, fitness traits or fitness genes, you can get an idea of uh, the assessment of the adaptive potential of the population. So what we did was uh, we took one single SNP marker from all these uh, genes that we uh, created a list of, but we also included genes from gene deserts, which are large intergenic regions that are not associated with any annotated gene. So with that, we designed a SNP panel that had 96 potentially non-neutral markers. And I use the word potentially because we have no reason to believe that these genes that we found in Monizin Makwell would be under adaptation or under, under selection. But at the same time, since they are already known from the literature that they might be important, they are important in uh, fitness, so they might have an uh, adaptive uh, potential uh, in the, in, in the mornings in Mokwil as well. And also just because we also chose a region that are not associated with any gene, uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we get 94 potative uh, neutral markers. We also included two mitochondrial DNA markers. And using this entire SNP panel, we genotyped 188 mornings in Mokwil individuals. So how do you actually quantify or how do you test for uh, genomic erosion? So there is, a framework, the idea is that if there is a small population with reduced effective population size that is fragmented and isolated, these uh, drivers can cause uh, a loss of, adapt uh, loss of overall genetic diversity due to genetic mechanisms of intermeeting and drift. And these can have a detrimental consequences of large effect deleterious mutations, uh, intermeeting depression, and loss of adaptive potential. At the same time, Local adaptation to the habitat can also uh, work in conjugation with the uh, with the inbreeding and genetic drift to cause further loss of diversity and uh, because of the and their impact on non neutral diversity. So we quantified these in, in uh, sites or samples from Arizona and in Texas. So basically, what we wanted to test was how much impact of all these drivers and consequences we are seeing in this. Texas population as compared to Arizona, where we have multiple sites, and this also represents the edge of a more continuous and apparently more robust population of Montezuma quail. But we also included certain samples from New Mexico, but these were raw just specimens and not, uh, not from the contemporary uh, wild, uh, wild hot tissue. So, but at the same time, mainly we were focusing on uh, comparing Texas uh, population genetics as compared to the Arizona. And we had uh, samples like mostly from Arizona and then Texas, but these are also representative of how many individuals are exist in those specific regions. So our results from population structure, when we took the genotypes at all loci, both uh, neutral and non-neutral, we identified that the Texas uh, individuals here are, are genetically distinct from Arizona and Arizona and New Mexico form a single population with K equal to three uh, ancestor populations being the most uh, accurate, accurate uh, model for the structure analysis. But more interestingly, if you only use the data from the genotypes at the non neutral side, which after filtering were only 987 out of 96, 
the, the patterns of population structure are more pronounced, uh, A with A equal to 3 being the most uh, accurate model for prediction. And these results were further corroborated by a PCA analysis, which do not have any, uh, like it's a model free approach. And we can see that when we divide it between non neutral and neutral, we get more uh, distinctive clusters uh, as compared to neutral. So uh, these results indicate that the Montezuma coil population exhibit higher level of adaptive differentiation as compared to neutral. We also observe a significant loss of. Uh, 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 observed heterozygosity at the Texas in the Texas samples as compared to Arizona samples, but at the same time we did not find any significant difference between uh, at the not uh, the neutral markers. This significant loss of heterozygosity or um, reduction of heterozygosity is very uh, problematic for the Texas uh, gene pool in the future because we also estimated that the effective population sizes of Texas is 20 times lower than Arizona. So, uh, given uh, taken together, we have shown we have found preliminary evidence that not only the Texas population have reduced effective population sizes, but also it's not only geographically but also genetically isolated from uh, the rest of its range. And these drivers or or the proximate causes can have definitely led to a certain uh, a significant loss of adaptive potential. But however, from the data we have so far. We cannot comment on how, like, what are the genetic mechanisms that are underlying uh, leading to this adaptive loss of adaptive potential, or any other further consequences that are part of the whole genomic erosion framework. The reason being that we only use a handful of a priori chosen SNPs, uh, but with that, with this in the panel, we have shown uh, we have captured a snapshot, a snapshot of the Montezuma quail gene pool in the uh, United States and it paints a very good picture for, um, for the Texas individuals. But the next step is to get more samples from the core range. So I'll be traveling with our collaborators, few collaborators this fall to Mexico and collecting more samples that represent the core range. And we already have C3 sequence, 85 individuals from uh, uh, Arizona, Texas, and New Mexico. And with additional samples from the Mexico, we can get the I, uh, we can reconstruct the demographic history and also trace the changes uh, in any over time. And with the whole genome sequences available, we can also test uh, and uh, quantify or estimate the signatures of genomic erosion. So hopefully with our effort, um, we can make a long-term sustainable and, uh, and, and, and viable uh, conservation approaches to save this few charismatic and economically important species from extinction. And with that, I would want to acknowledge our uh, partnering universities, our funding sources, and state agencies that provided samples uh, necessary for the study. And there would, my life would have no meaning without uh, the constant support of my advisors, family, and friends. And I would like to thank you all for listening and coming to my talk. And I'll leave this poster that summarizes the results as I've taken questions. Thank you. Yes. Are there any uh, captive populations of this soil? No. No. Okay. I mean, that, that's the biggest challenge that like people used to hunt these without even knowing how many are left, and now it's too late to realize that oh. There are not enough left. So now, thanks to the Quill uh, Decline Initiative, we are starting to have this. But captive breeding would not be uh, a certain thing that would happen in the future. All right, thank you.